All right. I am... I'm ready. I'm back. I'm ready. I'm here. So, Bub, who's your favorite corporate mascot? Oh, man. That's a that's a question. Um... Shit! Do you like, do you like the Quaker Oats guy? Do you prefer, like, the, um... What is it? The, uh, the... What are the banana... Uh, Dole? Like, the Dole, uh, banana lady? You mean Chiquita? Is it Chiquita? Yes, the Chiquita okay. banana. What do you do? You have any particular favorite mascot that you? Oh, have Red, your please heart? shut up. <laughs> Frosted Flakes ferret. All right, good choice. I see you're a man of culture. Just as like, as Just food, skimming. food, food at all, yeah, or no, mascot. Probably Pikachu. Yeah, for Pokemon, just as a... He's a as solid, whole. easy, well-rounded face. Like, people... You can identify that... Like, I, I think more people know who that is than fucking... Um, the Smacks Frog. <laughs> but Smacks is so great. But, I mean, you're right. Alright. Klaus is Bob's favorite mascot. No. <laughs> That's Klaus a possibility. favorite. Klaus isn't even Klaus's favorite. Kirk, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> He's Every right, though. Smacks does suck. What? I disagreed. I said it earlier. The stuff is just packing peanuts. It's it great. pretty much is. It's it's so sugary. It's puffed oats. It doesn't even taste good. It is, in fact, like puffed it. oats. <laughs> I like it. I was like, I, I don't know why, but I, I was always, I always enjoyed the, um, the Halloween themed cereals. Mm, okay. Like Frankenberry and all that shit. Yeah. Booberry. Yeah. And, uh, and Count, Count Chocula. Chocula. Uh, sniper said you know, earlier. Something that I don't understand because I know they're all coming from the same company. Mm -hmm. They've got Frankenberry. They've got Booberry. They have Count Chocula. They have all of yeah. these different Halloween themed cereals. You know, they've got leftovers. Why don't they just throw them in one big fucking bag and call them the monster mash? <laughs> because that would be a little disgusting. I'd fucking eat it. Children will eat anything. Blueberry and chocolate. I'd, I'd oh eat it my, now. that sounds great. <laughs> Children like will eat anything. Fruit plate ever. <laughs> I Ch think it's the God, same reason why people like... don't mix fruity pebbles and uh, cocoa pebbles. Yeah, no, you're right. That. Yeah, that's because you're addicted to sugar. It's not because it tastes good. <laughs> redwood, yeah, redwood, totally. <laughs> just, Carol okay, Mills just because just he would eat it. Say, Fuck it. Here's your, you know. But I'm a your, market base. Here's no, your you're not. Bucket of cereal. Eat whatever's in there. Who like me? Who like you? You are the exception, not the rule. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually addicted to insulin. It's it's, it's my high. <laughs> You know, I, I I agree with everything that was said in the last like thirty seconds. Yeah, <laughs> he is the exception. But you you it's totally know that kids would kid, if you if you put they'll, like they'll eat it. Kid, kids would eat they that. Would. If parents, you put a gift in the box, parents will eat it. Kids would eat it. Parents would be like, the kid never stop This moving. is fucking the gross. But my kids eat would eat it this more than like two bites. They would scream about getting it in the store because they think they want it. Yeah. Then they would get a big old bowl of it, sit down, eat like two spoonfuls, and go, "Oh, I don't feel good. You, you know, <laughs> I, I don't feel good." You know, this you is don't a bad think idea. Could, could down a bowl of Monster Mash? I think they could. I don't think they should or would want to. <laughs> I mean, like yeah, on I a think, dare, I, think... I could do it. Yeah, sure, but no, but I wouldn't like, as, enjoy as, like, the process. See, no, I, my 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 theory is this. Okay, so have you have you ever had fruit flavored chocolates before? Like a yeah, chocolate orange. Yes, this is chocolate different. Strawberries. Sure, it's it's different because it like it inherently wasn't designed that way. But if they had designed the flavors to to go with each other like that, then it might would... be easier now because they put more natural flavors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it would work a little better, but I don't think it would be by much. I'm just sitting here thinking that kid's gonna eat that bowl of cereal and be like, "Oh, my pancreas." <laughs> All of a sudden, I need insulin. Oh, no. Things I never said as a child. Oh, my <laughs> pancreas. The type 2, I feel it said again. 
<laughs> oh, my duodenum! Oh, God, why? I'm glaving my duodenum. <laughs> God damn it. My pancreas! <laughs> I got oh, hit my pancreas. So young. <laughs> I could have been a doctor. I could have so, been uh, a contender. I got I gotta know, uh, sniper. I see a newsy. When you were, <laughs> when you were seven, uh, at what point did you realize that you were a Jewish grandmother? <laughs> so we're on the eighth year. Hey, 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 guys! Don't be a slim. <laughs> Were you your own booby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. Stop being a mashugana and just continue the game, okay? No guarantees. Oh, my God. So painfully un-Jewish. <laughs> it is extremely... It, it's like horrible. He's, he's, the it's... Jewish, he's the Jewish grandmother in an Adam Sandler film, okay? <laughs> It's it's Rob no worse Schneider than my is the Jewish it's... <laughs> You know the sad thing is is that made him choke. Alright. Is that that would that would actually probably be made. Wait, what was like, what was that uh, the, the the cartoon? Um Eight Crazy Nights. Yeah, that that was actually I actually enjoyed that. I, I, I enjoyed like that. that. Yeah, but that was one of the last yeah, movies he did before he started making movies that catered specifically to his kids. Rob Schneider is a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back in it to win it. Yeah, we're going over to Klaus and Court. Jacob's swooping down. The floor's yours, guys. Man, hit it. Have at it. All Ford right. The courts. I'm uh, in his arms. I'll drop Klaus onto the floor. So in the background. Have the floor. So in the background, while we're hearing, ah. Uh, I will always love you. Yeah. I fucking hope Jacob not. Jacob swoops down. <laughs> you know, breaks in with the Superman theme song. Touches down. And uh, leans to the wall. Gasping. Heart beating in his chest. And he... Uh, looks over to Court. And then to Klaus. What happened? Did you land in front of me or behind me? Uh, he in said front. in front of you. Yeah, he's going to keep running. Uh, while while running, he's gonna say, "Hey, that's a really cool leg, bye!" And he's just gonna book it. All right. Well, he he's just gonna go ahead and push off and float along side, and uh, yeah, look in the class. Okay, seriously, what happened? Why why is why is the old man dying? What did you do? Uh, um, uh, well, there's only yes. one of us who holds a really big sword here, so, um, and he's just gonna... You did this? He's just gonna kind of silently look ahead. Klaus is gonna gurgle through the blood in his mouth. <laughs> Vampires! <laughs> uh, shit, Vamp needs to be burped! <laughs> Vampires. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Gurgle, gurgle, blood, blood, <laughs> vampire. Vampire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, we, um... We dealt with the vampires, kind of. Um, he's gonna still just kind of, kind of like he's not really there. Vampires. <laughs> there were there were there were twelve of them, by the way. <laughs> There's more than three. Oh, stop, we didn't get them all. Stop laughing and bandage me. <sighs> of course, vampires. <sighs> oh. Oh, the fire giant's a vampire too, by the way. And uh, where are we going, sons? And he's gonna. It's just I don't. How close are we? If, You're not if far. we've been, yeah. Then Jacob's going to uh, jet ahead and try and wake Sun up to let him know what's going on. Because of course, this is just what he needs to wake up to. Hi, don't ask about the leg. By the way, Klaus has just been bitten by vampires and cut in that's head. Not, that's not too far out it's, of the order. I mean, it, it, is, it is day. Remember, you guys did sleep. So yeah. you'll be coming back and the apothecary, we apothecary will be open. But Sun will be setting up shop. Um, he's just he's getting shop. Yeah. He's just getting things set up at this point. But yeah, he's going to 
basically sweep down, get into the shop, and uh, let Sun know. Sun, Klaus is injured. He's on his way. God. Okay. <laughs> All right. Not my fault this time. 100%. Thank you, Jared. You have two legs. <laughs> Who did you steal that leg from? <laughs> What was his name again? Brooklyn. <laughs> I, I knew the minute I asked, it was going to turn into a fucking thing. <laughs> the voice of Wolheim echoes in your mind. It was Rufus. You need to get a fucking a gift tag tattooed on that leg. It's <laughs> to Jacob yeah. from Property Rufus. Fuck you Rufus. very much. <laughs> Uh, no, closing his eyes, he's going to try and wreck his brain going over all the conversation that was just had. And his name was Rufus. Apparently he knew Jenya. Sadly, he's dead now. I'll explain later. Right now, Klaus is on, on his way. He's got a cut here across the chest. Blood's coming out of his mouth. It's foamy. Prepare. Do you exit the shop? Uh, he's going to stand by the door and kind of watch for Klaus sure, and he Court. But he's not going to. Sure. Sun just starts muttering under his breath. He's he's quite discontent. Um, he <laughs> give me perception, <laughs> please. When you try to write a character off, but everyone else keeps coming though. <laughs> he just wants to be fucking left alone. Just want to retire. I'm not even a doctor. I'm an alchemist. God damn it, Jim. <laughs> Jake, Jacob. Gotta, yes. have the gotta have the perception from you. Oh, I see. So it's me you'd like the perception from. Yeah. yeah. yeah you're well, the now that Jacob. I know that you'd like a perception from me. <laughs> when, I, when I looked and saw your face, I thought you rolled another 24. Yeah, I had to double check. I was like... I was like, did he roll another? <laughs> so close. Fucking close. Okay. You should 20. use inspiration. <laughs> you you over you over here, son. Uh, inside, he's like, I'm just I'm just gonna I'm gonna fucking move. I'm gonna leave. This town. <laughs> why do I, I? Why am I the guy they fall back on? I don't. Uh, still keeps minding his own business, setting up. Sure enough, court will be running around the corner. Klaus uh, in arms. Just. The oddest sight, to be I, honest. I will, if he's not going to hold the door open, I'm going to ram my shoulder through it. I'm not. I'm. Why do you think I'm standing there, idiot? <laughs> hey, just if he's holding it, he's gonna he's gonna run in. I'm assuming Sun would have cleared a spot. Or yes, yes, yes there okay. is there is in fact a spot. Uh, yes, for the gonna... impromptu surgical table to be moved out yet again. <laughs> He's going to run in, lay him on the counter. Um, uh, he was hit by uh, this, and he's going to unhinge his sword from the holster. He's going to lay it down next to Klaus. Uh, assuming this, this, this sword's relatively big. Um, and he's going to point. He's like, he was, uh, it was from here to here, and he's going to kind of like lengthen out where the incision of the sword was. <laughs> I like that he's like, oh, he was cut by this, removes his own weapon, and just sets it down like it's going to help. Like it's a tool. <laughs> like, hey, you can go ahead and pull the hurt off the blade, right? If you do it in reverse, it gets rid of it. <laughs> Sun, okay, sorry, I just, yeah, just don't, Sun, I draw it up and it'll close. Sun right? comes over, and he, like, he... <coughs> checks out the wound he sees what it is and he realizes that he can immediately tend to this and he's like well i, I, I don't know we, we we might not this he might not make it through this can can you yeah. see if if can can you show me again how you did this court's face is just gonna turn white uh complete like believing like he thinks klaus is dying now like he's like oh we're God. still awake here oh. You fuckers. Uh, uh, Klaus, he's gonna, he's gonna stand you up, and he's gonna kind of pass back the sword. Show me in one swift motion how you did this. <laughs> or, or you could, or you could not. Or, or I, I could just, you know, I, I'll just hug myself together again. I'll, I'll hold, and I'll, I'll cinch. Everything will be fine. 
We're just gonna cast Mend over and over and over. <laughs> Son just kind of looks over at you, Court, and he's like, "He can't die." What? He can't die. Why did you rush him here? Like he he what? needed aid. He can't. What? And Not he, that I'm aware just, of. He's gonna go from like worried about Klaus dying to just utter confusion. Just what? He can't die? He's going to come back with a few potions. And he's going to tend to the wound itself. But he's but he's bleeding and, and he faint and... Yeah, you're going to find out die? soon that that this guy doesn't die much. And neither does Olheim, for that matter. Where Where is he anyway? Does Olheim know that you have another leg? Jacob, how'd you get your leg? And it's going to... Like the delay, delayed... And don't you think the guy's going to be upset about his leg? Whoever this Rufus guy is, he's going to be real pissed off that you took it. Did you say Rufus? <laughs> yeah, he said he took Rufus's leg, whoever Rufus is. I'm just waiting for somebody what? in the background to yell, Dungeons and Dragons! And magic to pop off. I don't need okay. to repeat of that. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? You took Rufus? Where'd you... I can Rufus? explain everything, but for right now, can we just give me a moment to think? Port, are you together enough that you can help me get Alheim's body? He isn't gonna die. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna have to really like look look in on this one. Hold on. You're, you're gonna see him like. Nope. Shake just Still undying jackass. <laughs> <laughs> son. Yo, son, I've missed your presence in this party. Uh, um, no, son, uh, just help Klaus. We'll be back shortly. It's oh not God, very far. Why do I have to help him? He's, he's fine. He's. Look at. I was bit by a vampire. Oh, oh uh, you didn't and, say and... that. And uh, Court's gonna Court's gonna like do this and go. Yeah, me too. All right, I what? need everyone. To, I need everyone to leave. And and Belsa as well. I'm, I'm I'm done. I'm sorry. I quit. You uh, you 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 figured it out. You you hit the. I'm, I'm I, I quit. You still owe me. You know. What do I owe you for now? Your life? Oh, I thought we went over that already. How can I pay Which you time? back? You're undying. I am not undying. I die once. As far as you know, you haven't tried it. I'm not going to start <laughs> trying it either. It's the only way I found out. Man, you, you're a gambler. I'm not. I'm not a gambling man. <laughs> Listen, the first time I was not exactly willing. In fact, you remind me much of myself that time. Yeah, uh, you you have a... This is a hard sell. Good luck. Good luck. I'm more interested in this man's leg. A vamp... You wait, a vampire? Several and, vampires. And he's gonna, he's gonna point to his arm again. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Son, you take care of both of them. Apparently, I'm the only person who hasn't run into vampires tonight. Instead, I have to go ahead and run into... You know what? We're not even going to go into it yet. I'll be back. Yeah, good luck with your gimp stride. Uh, the, second, uh, the second the door closes and he's like away, uh, Cora's going to go, did anyone tell him that his dad's in town? Did we not tell him yet? What do you mean? Wait, wait, what? What? Hit. What do you mean uh, his dad's is, in town? Is Jenya still in the uh, in the potion shop resting, or like, but she moved? Jenya was moved. Okay. Um, do Do you remember the church lady? Yes, 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 I do. Um, when the church burned down, there was a a man. He was about this tall. Um, he had really red eyes, and he said that he was Jacob's dad, and he said his name was Neb... Nebeth... Neb... Nebthu... Nebthorn. 
No, it's the Torin. Why? 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 I don't know. This is... I was supposed to retire here. <laughs> Picked a shitty spot. You can say that again! <laughs> you picked a shitty spot. <laughs> now fix these bites. <laughs> Suck out the venom and stop being a bitch. <laughs> Make the boo boo go away, Uncle Son. It hurts. <laughs> Blood Mist doesn't have memories. God. <laughs> What's in the bites? <laughs> Son looks to each of you. Yeah. I got a special medicine for this. <laughs> Zuri drinks a potion and explodes. <laughs> he reaches down into uh, into the deep well of his his uh, various unguents and, and uh, supplies, and he draws out what looks to be a uh, a wine bottle. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... Yep. I'm gonna leave tonight. Maybe. You guys gotta catch me up on some details. I, 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 I... This, this... Why? Why is Naptatorin here? Why now? Um, why, why here? Why now? He said that the city was infested with evil. Um... I don't think he told me why. I think maybe to get Jacob? Uh, that other guy was really scared when we told him. What the, other guy? Um, the, the guy we brought with us the first time we came here? Uh, the guy we had handcuffed. Who, who stabbed Jacob. He had, yeah. he had, he had gotten very scared when we said Naps the Torn was in town. Is he that scary? And he's gonna kind of look around the room. Yes. Next question. <laughs> Have you ever seen a bubble floating down the top of a river before? Uh, and he's gonna like think really hard. Yeah. Have you ever popped a bubble? Yeah. He can do that to your body. Oh. And you can see the like look of realization come across his face. Oh. Hmm. And he's going to kind of just go and sit down in the corner. <clears throat> well, there's no reason for me to be here anymore. I uh, see I I can I can help um cure a cough. Uh, stabilize a fracture. I can even help with sullying a, a sour mood, turning a frown upside down. But man, I, I there's no medicine to cure what ails this. This town is sick. And I'm afraid that I don't have the proper supplies. I'm afraid that they don't make the kind of supplies that this town needs now. I don't think I'm going to be in town much longer. I, I'm I'm sorry. I I wanted to. I was hoping that this would be a a fresh start. Even with you here, I, even with you here, you were a constant reminder of of the things that had happened. But this was supposed to be different. I... Whew. 
Cheers. And he immediately starts drinking from uh, the bottle directly after he takes a big swig, which kind of puckers up his lips. He passes the bitter wine out to each of you, offering each of you a drink. Uh, <clears throat> uh, when a, the bottle would eventually get to court, he'd I don't drink. And he still kind of has like that like stare where he's like thinking about the Court, you're, you, you're probably going to need something to take the edge off. Things are only going to get way worse before they get better. Mm. And to be totally honest, your friends here are right in the middle of it. And he's going to kind of like look um, at Klaus. I'm a... It, it is technically... It's just me and Klaus, right? Yeah. Yeah, and he goes... Uh, but like when, gonna, when he said your friends were here, like he kind of pointed to this motion. Yeah. Uh, he's going to kind of look up and he's going to kind of get that gleam back in his eyes and he's going to go, my friends? And you're going to see him kind of get like a smile. I mean, I don't know if they're your friends yet or not, but... Look, what I'm saying, kid, is that things are probably going to get a lot worse and strategy is easily outdone by... By luck in this regard. So unless you're hell of lucky, you got all the right people on your side and and the gods above are watching, guiding your every step, I'm not sure you're gonna make it out alive. Cauldron was supposed to be a nice nice place. But if Nathatorin's here, this place is a jungle. And you're gonna die. He's gonna kind of like hold on to the bottle. He's just gonna kind of look into it. He's gonna stand up, walk the bottle over, hand it to Sun, put it in his hands, pick up his sword from off the table, sheath it. I guess I'm kind of lucky, but if it means saving my friends, then, I mean, it's worth trying, right? Foolish pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Can you? He's going to kind of scratch his head. Uh... I don't, I don't get dizzy that easy. I can... He looks to you, Klaus. That's persimmon wine. It was from the valley near where I was trained. It's one of the last few things I have of home. You might be able to enjoy it the same way that I do. I want to stay and help you guys fight the good fight, but I know when to pick my battles. And I'm not sure I'm gonna, going to stay alive long enough. <clears throat> I'm not sure you'll be any safer out of the city than in it, but if it's what you feel you must do, then... You're probably right, but I see it as a lesser of two evils. That's fair enough. You, on the other hand, you were made for this. Made is certainly one way of putting it. I have never seen someone so tenaciously cling to life from body to body as yourself. This place is a... a trial, a breeding ground for... monsters. How are you constantly holding the door? Almost always. I see you... Surviving in it. Hell thriving in it. I thought it was... I thought it... It, it was gonna be a little different. And I didn't think it would be this way coming out of Occipitus. Occipitus. 
the only thing I know to tell you is giving up becomes a lot harder when it's not an option. Well, it's still an option for me. Fluke or not. I'm going to take my things and... I guess go to a city where I can potentially thrive. If you happen to best this beast, whatever it actually is in this town, then come see me. I have enough coin at this point to start a shop most anywhere. I got this place practically on a steal. Hell, Jared gave it to me. I think more than anything, he was just surprised to see a new merchant coming into town. So, is there anything else that I can help you with before I depart? Do you know anything to stop vampirism? He's going to point at the uh, bite marks again. Last I heard is you could heal, heal, uh, kill the person that, that bit you. And it's supposed to slow the staunch the flow. Posted we killed. No. They got away. Are there any other ways? Well, there is supposed to be a way, but it's supposed to be the most painful thing that I've ever heard of. Oh. In my line of work, in my profession, vampirism is a disease. It's a sickness. I can tell you, but one, you would have to procure the the materials needed, and then two, you would have to survive through it. Hmm. What would we need? Willing to try? Hmm. I don't know, and he's gonna kind of, like, look at the bite wounds. I don't know if they fit that deep. The answer's yes. Tell us what you know. Lie. You need lie. Lots and lots of lie. Are you familiar with lie? The court's gonna <laughs> kinda have like the gears turning look. Like You can tell we don't bathe much. He breaks I out a small he... vial and he shows you that there is um this this small uh it almost looks like a small powder like substance. This isn't exactly easy to come by, but I can put in a requisition from another town, since I'm the only immediate apothecary in this town, and I don't have that much. I can put in enough for each of you to take a bath of this, but you will need to soak your bodies, so find a dwelling large enough to rest your bodies. You will need scalding hot water and you'll have to take a lie bath. You bake so the we, sickness out. We have a bathhouse. You boil it. And that's it. what's supposed to hurt. Uh, yeah. That does sound painful. Make the order. <clears throat> I'll reimburse you if you need. He nods. Uh, he moves over to his script... Uh, and he starts writing off something. Um, and he'll say that on my way out, I'll pass it off to a courier. I've got enough coin. Consider this... Consider this... A thank you for informing me of the hardships ahead and allowing me the opportunity to get out alive. Uh... Court's gonna get up and he's going to outstretch his hand in front of Sun. He extends his, offering a shake. Thank you for helping everyone. 
And he's just gonna kind of stare. You don't even know what's ahead. I'm sorry. And this, he's gonna kind of drop the smile, and it's just gonna kind of fade a bit. He looks to you, Klaus. He pulls a small, uh, what looks to be small side bag of potions over, um, opens it up and shows to you that there are three, uh, three potions. Excuse me, there are five potions. Um, I had these in case things were to go awry. I don't know when you're going to need them, but I know you will need them. Uh, three of them are, are healing potions. The other are restoration. I was able to store at a quite high level. It took a while. But this should undo some damage in the future. When you need it, of course. They are restoration potions. Will you make do without them? Well, I made them specifically for you guys. I, I, I'll, I'll be just fine. Double fist. Chug, 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 chug. All heim. Lad. Yo. Where, where have you been? What, what have you been doing? Where have you been going? Went back to the tanker, get himself a drink. Uh. So I just saw Jacob get carried away, well, teleported away. Yeah. Uh, I probably, I probably would have just left. I probably would have be just leaving the alley at that point. Um. Also, not realizing that my new, my new, uh, or my restored form actually has a new uh, property to it. That I'm probably not fully aware of, or I might be, but uh, my eyes have uh, definitely changed in appearance. Yeah. Uh, As you consciously try to kind of control and manipulate your arm, it doesn't seem to change. Yeah, and I'm I'm okay with that. As long, it's staying within proportion. That's perfectly fine. Um, walking out though, um, looking around, just kind of surveying the area. Uh, did they make any mention of the, the bathhouse to me at all? I don't know if that was ever mentioned. Yes, because... No. I, I, think, they I, think, said, I, was, I think they yeah, said that, that they, they were, were intending to go to the bathhouse. Oh, but, we never said yeah. that we owned it. Yeah, but you didn't know that they owned okay. it, and you didn't know anything at all about, about, uh, the about the That would be my last point of reference. So I would, head, I would head there then. Okay. Um. Oh. Yeah. What are you What are you doing with the uh, the ore? Uh, I mean, right now I technically have to pocket it because I don't have any equipment personally. Okay. Or... This This isn't small, right? Like this isn't. It's not like you have a like a three pound bar of this stuff. Yeah. And it's it's twisted and not like you have a raw, unrefined ore. Um. I mean, I would take it with me. I'm not going to leave it there. For sure. sure. Um. So after you you've stood up at this point and you're kind of picking it up this is probably about uh about 35 to 40 pounds of ore uh it's a substantial amount i'll take like a discarded like flower sack somewhere nearby if they have like any of those uh, large sacks for like carrying uh produce and stuff and yeah. i'll move it into there and i'll just have it haunched over my shoulder um Kind of uh, having taken care of the ore, I'll start making my way towards the bathhouse. Like I said, that's the last known information that I have. Oheim, you um, you glance down as you bag this ore, and you realize that you are naked. You are absolutely, utterly in the buff in your birthday clothes, my friend. Rebirth. Um, the only thing that is clothed on your person is the shoulder where it's this staunch, like, facial defending part of the armor, and it goes all mm -hmm. the way down to the arm. Yeah, uh, the what, 
I still had the work clothing though. So I mean, you could, could put I tie that on. That yeah, I mean, feasible. Yeah, yeah you I could. I mean, it'll be baggy. It'll be a little baggy, but um, I'll tie it off on the legs and stuff, so that way it doesn't uh, staunch my movement or anything. Okay. Um, once I get that on, like I said, start making my way over. Sure. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um. Yeah. So you make my way over to that house. People don't turn you away. At least the few that you can immediately find. Um, some mm -hmm. people naturally avoid you because, well, you look a little strange. But yeah. by nature, dwarves are, particularly yourself, you're, you're fairly jovial and you're inviting. Um, you don't really carry much of a bad attitude, so it doesn't really wane on your features. So when you stop people to ask for directions, which you don't necessarily need to do because you lived for a short time in this town. You yeah. know where everything's at. Hell, you were on scene at one point, uh, removing the uh, the Leviathan. The okay. So you know exactly where the bathhouse is. Cool. Um, I would say I was. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the uh, distinguishing feature that uh, Olheim now has would be that his eyes would be glowing a bright gold. Yeah, they are. It's it's yeah. a fairly dis distinguishing feature that I think anyone would be able to see. Which yeah. uh, at this point. There are plenty of people that have come through town that have exhibited similar features. Remember, um, Horam. Horam had golden eyes. Uh, Jacob has horns. So people okay. tend to watch out for those features. If your yeah. eyes glow a little, it might be a little strange, but if you physically mean no one harm, then... They're not going to worry about it. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, um, so yeah, this. still uh, the aura on my back making my way through um it's a weird feeling because the the onset anxiety and fear that he had is completely gone from him now it's more of like a focus that he has and it's it's like it, it's the way he feels right now is like yeah, this has to get done. I do have to find Jacob, Stay but it's not its not like a panic feeling. It's not something that he's bolting to the bathhouse for. It's, sure. It's, he's kind of like half confused yet, like he's okay. But I mean that, like when he's walking there, like he's, it's a set, like set motion kind of thing. Utter um, faith that everything is okay. Yeah. In a sense, yes. Oh, I'm, um, you, you will have noticed as you were dressing that your the damage that had been done to your shoulder the darkening of your veins is also gone you no longer see the marks of your own shield bearing curse oh shit And the uh, the voices and stuff are gone too, right? Yeah. Oh shit. All right. Um, kind of just doing a quick uh, rub of his chest, so kind of just leave it at that, and then realize that uh, there's not a heartbeat happening right now. It's more of like a thrumming sound, kind of like when you put your, uh, I guess, like your hand on a like a power pole, and you hear that. Yeah. Like it's... that weird charge sound. That's. But he's getting kind of just takes his hand off and goes, and just kind of thinks himself like that's. There's no that's drumming. It. There's no palpitation of a heart. It is. It's just like this. Yeah. Um, and he keeps walking uh, as he gets to the bathhouse. Uh, is there anything act any commotion going on outside or anyone there? Outside of the bathhouse, no. Okay. Um, you can hear movement inside, however. Okay. Uh, taking that into account, he'll probably assume that it's the guys, as I said, they were making their way in there. And he'll uh, he'll make his way inside. When you step inside, you will see that it's a bloodied mess. There is a woman immediately bloodied and unconscious on the floor before you. You can hear the sounds of some liquid freely moving. As you step in and look to your left, there are what looks to be three very small rooms where blood decorates 
both the floor and the walls all around. Multiple figures, doused in blood, some coagulated, some not. Dugobras also stands here. He hasn't immediately noticed you. Someone emerges from the third room. It's Thelsa. Her arms are covered in blood. And what little bit is not covered, she wipes at her brow with her shoulder. She sees you, and fear falls to her face. Um... What are you doing here? Dugabras turns. He doesn't really say anything at first. He looks back to Thelsa. You do see what looks to be a hammer materialized in his hand. Black blacksmith hammer. Thelsa has never seen you in this form before. There is nothing for you to be afraid of. Who... Who are you and why are you here? And why are you not afraid of the ten-foot-tall, fiery man? You already know who I am. No, I'm afraid I don't. You have but a moment to respond. Before I'm afraid he may bring that hammer down upon you. I am Olheim. Olheim Shieldbearer. I believe when we first met you had seen me as that of a goblin. Or an orc. This is my, my true visage. Olheim? No. Olheim had one arm. Olheim was a half-orc. That was one of many forms I had taken. Prove it. Tell me something that only I would know, then. You slayed a black dragon in Occipitus. Oh, thank God, Olheim. <laughs> Oh, I, um, why did you change? It was Helm's will. And unfortunately, I have now learned that the one I worship is now dead. Who? Helm. You worship someone named Helm? I do. I thought you worshipped Yolana. No. Are you certain? He'll lift up the gauntlet, showing the symbol. I've never seen from... that before. And she draws her hand to the side like she's going to draw upon something herself. Or perhaps a dagger or a rapier or something like that. Alheim only prayed to Yolana. Something must have addled your mind. No, I'm afraid I'm very clear-headed, Alheim, or whomever you say you may be. Helm has never existed, has never been a deity. He kind of just looks back to himself and thinks out loud. The flow of time must have been staunched. Alheim. If he gave him... Yes. When you say that internally, you hear the voice. It's the fleeting sound of Nidrama. Alheim. This world no longer has Helm. I was his last remaining touchstone. Nothing remains of Helm of this plane. There is now a void in the Deidic structure. 
I'm sorry, but... Only you, you have the remaining knowledge of Helm. There's nothing for you to apologize for. And if he indeed Del is truly God... Delsa looks to you. Okay, crazy. Who are you talking to over there? This time uh, you see that she draws a rapier from her side. Before she finishes that, um, I'll tell the drama. If that spot is vacant, then until he returns, I will be that helm. I'm not sure you're fit, but only time will tell. A prophecy lay cemented with the entrance of Navthatorin's blood into Celestia wrought the end of Helm but the beginning of you your future has not been decided you have no destiny you may have to forget much of your past Then I will leave that in the past, and I will be Olheim no more. Refer to me as Helm. Until he returns, I will take his mantle. He uh, looks over to the uh, fire giant. You. Is that a weapon you wield or a tool for crafting? This is my blacksmith hammer. What is it to you? Potential help if you're willing to part with it for a day. I part not with it. It's mine. Then help me with it. It harkens my girl. This I can understand. Then will you help me refine this? And then he'll kind of drop the sack over, and then he'll open it up. His eyes glimmer for a moment. Almost like a child seeing a brand new toy. Something that they had forgotten about. It's provoking. It's... It's strange to him. He mo moves over, and with a single hand, he lifts this. By the deepest fires, this soul stone. It is. He looks up to you, says one word. Yours. Indeed. I need to give it form here on this plane before I take it to another to grant it its power. Can you help me? It would be my honor. You're a man no more. He drops down to a knee. He bows. Felsa looks on, confused. And that's where I'm going to end yeah. tonight's session. Noise! Fuck! <laughs> Goddamn cliffhangers! What a session. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh and he's going to be pissed that he missed this one. Uh. And then Dougal Ross bites him as he turns to a goddamn vampire. Ah, it's too good. Wild. It's too and good. Christy, Christy's just losing her damn mind. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she's she's screaming. These uh, are the days of our extra. lives. She she lives for this man. But yeah, that's gonna mark session one hundred and thirty-eight of 
the Shackled City. Bear in mind. Oh, excuse me, 139. This, for those of you that are watching, if you've ever played this campaign before, forgive me or don't. I'm not your dad. This is actually unscheduled material. None of this is prepared. Today was yeah, totally off the I, cuff. I, I, think we, I think we pretty much fucked the story. <laughs> this is entirely off the cuff, and we're, uh, we're doing it live. Yeah, it's making for... It's making for an interesting, interesting time. That's for certain. So, people have questions. Any questions you guys may have, go ahead and fire them off right now. This is your opportunity before I find someone to send our love over to. Maybe you have questions or concerns about what you guys had seen or heard of in this episode. This was uh, Christy's episode. favorite episode, Bob. I'll be honest, this was my favorite episode so far. There was a lot of information dropped. A lot that's of pretty, information. That's pretty intense if Christy thinks this is her favorite episode. Oh, think think about it. Think about the things that have happened this episode. Yeah. Uh, think about life. all the information that was given to Jacob, given to Alheim. Son retired. That's Allheim, that's like that, that's a cliff note. Alheim's a dwarf. <laughs> well, like there's like it, it contributes. There's a lot of shit. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. Also, I'm happy because my my new character got to shake my old character's hand as the old character was leaving as the new character is symbolically joining the group. I figured you 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 might like that. I digged it. It was pretty intense. <laughs> kind of masturbatory, but okay. Yes. Um, I mean, the, yeah. The city is, in fact, in a caldera. This was uh, written for 3rd edition um, D&D, but I've basically converted everything over to Pathfinder. Up. When this all yeah. ends, we have to do a we have to do a side story in the universe where they actually went to get Sakata's soul back. Mayhaps, mayhaps, <laughs> we just might do that. Fuck that shit. <laughs> By the time this game is over, you guys will you'll be so incredibly strong. You can just walk into the fucking boneyard and take his soul back if you want. <laughs> hey, well, hey, keep in mind that the only person now. who is even aware is of Sakata's soul right now, no, is his existence. Klaus. His existence entirely is is yeah. Klaus. Yeah, Unless that's... Griffin suddenly wants to uh wants to man up and become an adventurer. It's pretty accurate. All right, guys, let's see. Are there any questions here? Oh shit! Did we find out what was in the sack Jacob stole? We did not. No, not yet. I'm assuming since you're having to homebrew halfway through, it was never a finished campaign. It is a finished campaign. We just yes. fucking. It kick, is. We, it is, in fact, we a, kick this train off rails. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I, but, I like uh, this is this is why people ask me. They ask me all the time, like, Bub, why do you why do you run modules? Well, modules are a written story that you can do with whatever it is that you want to do, and I'm okay with that. I like doing that because I read it and I'm like, well, that's that's a horseshit arc. I'm getting rid of that, or I'm gonna change that because I dislike it for this reason. But more than anything, I sandbox it. And I let my players act around it. And eventually, the primary story Converge. aligns, right? Like, mm -hmm. it, it helixes together, and it starts it starts drawing this, this like, their own story with the main story. And the parallel uh, becomes, it, it becomes huge. Like, it's this penultimate moment when things start converging together. Another, uh, in other questions. words, in other words, we've got to clear a point A and a clear point B. But yeah. how we get there is up to us. And we constantly fuck up enough that we needed to make different paths along the way. Yep. Uh, the other it's, question. It's is... not so much that you know we had to differ from the game. No, we're just that bad. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't say that you guys are. We are just bad. take everything differently. You just you do you you do in fact. Take everything so differently. Uh, Bub, is Shackled City in a volcano, and what system is this? Third Nobody edition Caldera. Yes. What system do we play in, though? We play in Pathfinder. Path is, Path is it second Finder. edition? Pathfinder? Just, it's just said it's Path first edition We've Pathfinder. been playing Pathfinder for almost three years, and you oh, have shit. to ask. That explains why your roles are so much bigger than mine. I was sitting here doing so much math for no reason. You're such a dude. Shit. Like 3.5 and Pathfinder are like damn news. Yep. Yeah. So I think it's like it only comes down to like the gods that are in it. Um, uh, Christy asked the question of is 
so as son gone like cicada now like gone oh, gone yeah. he's retired oh yeah son son is um he is leaving he's he's, he's leaving out. he's he he's not dead right he told him like come if, you know if you find me in a city look for an apothecary um and i should be doing well because i mean he's like uh what a 10th level chirurgeon uh yeah, a little level eleven now. So yeah, Certainly. he's he's going to, he will mm. excel in his in his field most certainly. He has, like a, he has like a thirty to alchemy. So, he's uh making Boku bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. So, uh, any other questions, last comments, concerns, things of that nature? Uh... You like the game? Do you dislike the game? Did you guys have fun tonight? That's what I want to know. Uh, yeah. As players, I had a ball. Yeah, I had a great time. I, I mean, so hard that I got a headache. Kind of DMing that opening, that that, that was kind of cool. Did you actually? Uh, what do the players think of of that? Do you do you guys like it when the viewers or not the viewers are when the when the players actually get an opportunity to um, to tell their own story in the beginning? Do you do you enjoy it? I see it very like. Uh... The, the best way to put it would be like the Harmon town where like how he tells the story and the how he tells the story you can kind of see the animations like yeah that's fitting sniper tells the story it would cut to like something super like really intense on the details and then it cuts to like something I do and it looks like someone doing like stick figure art it cuts to will like it seems like a little bit more better probably for Ronald it's more like the characters now, look red... really intense but the environments are you know is this purely no. theater of the mind? Um, no, no, it is not purely theater of the mind. Um, obviously, with role play, then yeah. If if there is role play, then yes. But if there is a map uh, for like dungeon crawl, dungeon crawls always come with a map. Um, so we will utilize a map for um, one storytelling purposes and two for uh, the the combat, the battle sim that is uh, Pathfinder, um, because they they are it's 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 heavily written around the mechanics of of being a, a battle sim um, and strategy game. So yeah, uh, we will have maps, but largely the role play uh, is theater of the mind. You know, it, it takes precedent. I I would much rather have a story than a map that players can abuse. Um, another question was, uh, was my new character introduced um, as Sun is leaving? Uh, I've been playing as Court for what, the past four or five sessions? Um, yeah. the overlays just hasn't, hasn't been updated yet. If you want to see his introduction, shoot back about four episodes. And, um, that's when he came in. We'll also have, uh, this next month's, um, excuse me, uh, this next month's Crit Deck, which is the monthly newsletter that's going out. Uh, Karami and I will sit down with Red and we will write, uh, Quartz, um, backstory and introduction and sort of give you guys a feel for it. You guys will be able to catch that. In the monthly crit deck, that is a patron exclusive. Uh, for the record, tonight we did get a new patron. It was Heaven's Wrath. Heaven has come on stage as a, a $5 level patron, and he is supporting the dream. Keeping the stream alive. Keeping the dream alive. Um, saves you some trouble? Definitely, Grammy. It definitely does. Um, remember, guys, that is how we primarily continue the stream. That's how I can keep doing things. Inevitably, I would love to find myself in a situation where I can run a an active like an active network but right now i'm just worried about paying my own bills and that's the primary way to do that so check out the patreon it's uh the best way to through to throw support at the stream um check out the twitter if you guys want to see me active there i will go through intermittent posting i may not post something for two or three days and then i'll post like six or seven things in a day uh, Discord is where I'm always active, pretty much all the time. If you cannot reach me on Discord, it's because I have fallen asleep or I've been forced to leave my home. Uh, so check out the Discord. Um, I think that's mostly it. You guys like video movie games? Night. Check out movie Humble. Night. Yeah, movie night's coming up. Actually, yeah, ten days from now. Um, we have. Let's see. Do I have it here? I might actually have it here. It's gonna be a movie night. I'll go ahead and grab the image. That I have for movie night. Movie night. Browse for the file. Uh, bear with me for just like two seconds. Oh, and last but not least, keep in mind that 
next month is Bub Fest. So oh, yeah. those of you interested in coming out and meeting Bub and well, at least I'm one of the link in chat, Bub. There it is. Boom bam. It's the whole stream. Movie there night. Patrons only. Time for double feature. We'll be doing Unbreakable and Split. Original and sequel, starting at 9 p.m. EST. Private message me for details, but you must be a patron. Patrons only get in. Uh, we'll be running through rabbits, so seats are going to be limited, as you guys know. But if it kicks up and we need more seats, it's 25. Or 30. I think it's 25. If we need more seats, I will host a second rabbit, and we can uh, we can just kick it off at the same time. Uh, so seats will be limited, but anyone who's a patron can get in for that. Thank you guys again for everything. Uh, Bubfest is coming up. It's in like three and a half weeks uh you're not gonna want to miss that it's in ohio if you cannot come no sweat make it to next year's bub fest if you can come then you should probably have already let me know either way there's the bub fest details in chat if you didn't get it we'll make sure to ping that again for you there it is and i'll talk to you cats uh later we're gonna, we're gonna head on over and host q my main man q he's part of the lab cats um, it looks like tonight he's playing The Evil Within, getting ready for some October Scarefest. Uh, love you guys. Have a good evening. Peace. I'm out of here. Huzzah. Oops. Uh